Alex. In um, it together. We are still on track to ship Ada Box very soon. There is not that many openings left. Uh, I think we're very close to running out because we just got a notification. So if you haven't already, go to adabox.com and pick it up. Uh, we'll be shipping uh, probably within four weeks. Yeah. There's a little bit of a delay, obviously, where, you know, we had to yeah. wait to be able to get um, some of the components we needed, but we are putting yeah, the boxes we, together. We are still on track. We're, we're doing it. Okay, first up. Okay, so this is, this week is great for people who love Din Whales. Are you a Din Whale fan? Well, this week is for you. Uh, we have a whole bunch of different Din Whale accessories that let you connect uh, various uh, boards and circuit, yeah, circuitry boards and, and single board computers. So actually, the first one I'll start with is this one which I think is neat. It's actually just a, a mount, but here's what's cool about it. You can mount an Arduino Uno on it. You can mount uh, a Mega, a Raspberry Pi, a BeagleBone. And um, here's an example. Uh, it's got mounting holes for all of them. So it's a nice side mount. Uh, it doesn't have any you know, breakouts or anything. It's just a mount, but it comes with that DIN rail connector. So you know, if you have like a, a dual DIN rail here, I'm gonna just uh, demo it. You slide it on and then you can bolt it down and it's always hard to get going on live video. Okay, uh, so then you can slide onto the DIN rail and you can add um, It's like a roller other coaster board. for your electronics. It is like a roller coaster, but you know, for industrial users, I think this is a, it's a nice- It's more like a monorail train tracks. Yeah, it's a yeah, monorail. Yeah. So this is a nice monorail for your electronics. Um, this pairs very nicely with something what we put in stock a couple weeks ago, which is our 40 pin terminal block breakout. This is sold separately, um, but you can uh, also put this on the railing and then plug it in over via this cable. So you have a full, uh, hold on. Uh, so you can have the Raspberry Pi or BeagleBone or whatever, plug in, have the terminal block and then you can have um, USB and Ethernet come out here, power, and then uh, the GPIO if you want to connect this to something. So for industrial uses um, or just, you know, you want to organize your single board computer life, uh, these DIN rail add-ons are great. Okay. And just to show you some of the other ones. Yeah. We uh, also we have Metro or Arduino shaped ones and ones for Mega or Grand Central. So these plug in upside down. Um, that's just the easiest way to get to the headers because they're socket headers. You can still power them. You can, um, there's a reset button that's exposed here. Um, you can connect SPI if you like. And these ones do come with terminal blocks. So they're more expensive because they have terminal blocks uh, for all the GPIO as well. And then of course, uh, for mega projects, the mega version, uh, the Grand Central also fits quite nicely. Um, again, you can give it power and USB and mount it. It's pretty heavy, so it's like a half a pound. Okay. Din rail action. Right next up. All right, din rails. Okay, we also have um, the uh, Flickr, or Flick, uh, I think Flick, sorry, I can't remember the name of it. The Flick case for, um, Flick IR case for Raspberry Pi 4. Um, this is a really nice case. Flurk, right, I can't remember their name. Uh, the Flurk case, um, so they do a, uh, they have an IR remote that, and they, um, to make, turn Raspberry Pi computers into um, AV setups. And uh, they made this really nice case. I don't carry a lot of Raspberry Pi 4 cases because there's a ton of them, but um, I really liked this one. Um, this one's screwed together. It's got this like really nice soft top and a metal outside. So it's nice and durable. It's nicely brushed. And on the bottom again, it's got this like soft rubbery bottom so it fits nicely and you can put stuff on top oh, of it yeah nice. it's, a nice, it's a nice feeling um and it has a heat sink built into it and of course it has all the outputs you need you can get to the sd card very easily it's a really beautiful case it even has a little slot here if you want the gpio cable to come through kind of hard to see but there's a slot here uh, for the gpio cable to come through and screws and of course uh, all the usb and ethernet so this is a very nice case from the Flurk team. We also carry their remote. So if you want to turn um, your uh, Raspberry Pi into a Kodi box, uh, this case will do a very nice job. Okay, next up. We also have a, another sensor, this one from ST. This is the ST uh, LPS 25. Uh, it's a humidity, sorry, it's a barometric pressure and temperature sensor. I have it wired up here to an uh, 
STM 32 F405 feather. And um, this sensor, it's, it's nice, it's inexpensive, it's high quality, uh, it has a nice range. And um, uh, it's got quick connects on both sides. So you can, you can see you just plug it right into uh, this board or we have um, you know, ones with socket header or plug header or alligator clips. So you don't have to do any soldering at all. You just plug it in and we've got code for Arduino and CircuitPython and Python. So you can use it with, again, any microcontroller or my computer you'd like. Um, great sensor, very easy to use. Uh, great if you want to do um, altimeters, altitude detection, barometric pressure changes with altitude. And it can also be used for some weather detection. So you know if you're a, in a low power, uh, sorry, a low pressure zone, you know, maybe a storm is coming in, high pressure probably means it's going to be nice and sunny. Okay, next up. It's Mr. Bill. No. It's squishy circuits. Um, this is neat. This is a conductive Play-Doh. This is a, a kit to get you started. Um, this is a starter kit. It's got a lot of stuff with it. I think it's got like eight different tubs, different colors of squishy Play-Doh that's conductive. It also comes with a nice battery pack that's protected. It's got uh, fuse, uh, a fuses inside of it uh, to protect it, an LED to let you know it's on, and um, of course, information. So this is a four AA battery pack. Um, turn it off or on, very nice. And then here you've got, um, you know, for example, blue conductive dough. And what I like is they've got these little spade connects. Makes it really easy to um, plug it right into the dough and then uh, you can turn on LEDs. They also have a buzzer, which I'm gonna plug in. It's gonna be really annoying. So just get ready for that. Uh, that that's annoying, uh, but kids love annoying. So um, if you want to play with electronics, but like not even soldering, not even alligator clips, you're really playing with Play-Doh, um, this is a really fun kit. And it's really great for young kids to like Add a little bit of electronics to their playtime. Yeah, young kids. Uh, adults are going to buy a bunch of these. And okay. adults love it, too. Next up, star of the show besides you, Lady Ada, and the community and all of our team members this week is this product. That's right. In addition to everybody in the community that's awesome, this product's also awesome. This is also from ST. We've been adding a lot of uh, sensors and devices from ST to the shop. This is a combo 9 off sensor that features the LSM 6D socks. I love socks as well as the LIST 3MDL magnetometer. So this is accelerometer, gyroscope, magnetometer, all in one and nine DOF board, um, all ready to go connected over I squared C with lots of interrupts. And the reason that this is so great is we actually did a comparison of all the different gyroscopes because when you're doing orientation um, detection for um, like calculation and fusion, the gyroscope quality is actually has a huge effect on whether you have low drift and whether you have um, very quick reaction. So the LSM-6 DSOX has really excellent zero rate um, offset. So it, it doesn't have, you know, won't slowly twist and drift as much as many other gyroscopes. And it's got very low noise. Like when you're sitting on a table and it's not doing anything, um, it's like 0.1 degree per second change. It's very, very minor um, noise. And so you're not gonna see a lot of jitter in your um, orientation detection. So, you know, fuse this with uh, Mahoney or NXP uh, fusion algorithm um, or Magwick. We've got a library for how to do that and you can get 3D orientation data out. And this so far has been one of the nicest sensors at a very good price um, for getting orientation data. You're gonna like this a lot if you're coming from, you know, an MPU 6050 or, you know, some other earlier uh, IMU sensors. This is a nice, nice nine-off pairing. Mm -hmm. Nice to products. Nice to products.